Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exalt over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horn in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore, your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Oh, oh. 
is the death of his faithful ones. And I am your servant, your chosen one, for you have set me free. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses. And they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were, t they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. How many times have parents said to their children, Will you please just listen to me? Of course, this is probably hardly a statement about whether the youngsters have hearing problems. Moreover, it is a statement that conveys the youngsters must act on what they hear, or they really are not listening. Listening means acting on what was heard and what we hear. It also means that wills are changed, evidenced in whether the children do what their parents are asking. Finally, listening means that youngsters themselves are changed, often through something that they don't like, through obedience and faith. In listening and doing, we form patterns and responses within our lives. Real listening that leads to following through on actions takes a conscious effort, a commitment, sometimes mercy, but always charity. In St. Mark's Gospel, we hear that Saints Peter, James, and John hear God the Father speak from a cloud telling them to listen to Jesus Christ, his Son, when we hear, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. We can probably all identify with the apostles, hardly knowing what to say and being terrified by witnessing Christ's transfiguration. We can, like the apostles, miss the point, for they wanted to remain up on the mountain and build three tents and stay put. But Jesus Christ leads them, as well as us, back down the mountain in our mission to witnessing the gospel to the world. It is clear from today's gospel, though, that the apostles' confusion and fear did not keep them from listening and following Christ. Saints Peter, James, and John not only witnessed Jesus' transfiguration, they themselves also undergo a transfiguration in their character. Some change occurs within them so that they are able to hear God's voice clearly announcing Jesus Christ's identity as beloved son and the clear terms of their own discipleship when each heard listen to him. We discover that they have listened because they questioned Jesus about what rising from the dead meant. Had they not listened, they could not have questioned and pondered on God's command. Had the disciples not listened, they could not have acted in following Christ as disciples. So listening means acting, which is what happens to us who listen openly to the word of God, whether it's at the holy sacrifice of Sunday Mass or daily Mass. And we are transformed and strengthened for our discipleship in today's world that is plagued with strife and persecution, and of course, atheism. Recall today's first reading from the book of Genesis, where Abraham, our father in faith, listened and obeyed God's command to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. And for that obedience, God promised Abraham abundant blessings and countless descendants, which is to say, continued life through his descendants. Our own obedience to listening to God and acting as faithful disciples brings us the gifts and graces and blessings of having that life with Jesus Christ, which is to say, eternal life. St. Paul continues in his epistle to the Romans to instruct us. We who are Jesus' disciples, when he states, and I quote, If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all." End quote. Often the hard part of our Lenten journey is dying to ourself. For if we're honest with ourselves, we like to hold on to our selfishness. We like to hold on to our self-centeredness. We never like to admit that we are the ones who are wrong, not the other person. 
It's much easier to point finger and find faults with everybody else. But dying to self calls us to completely, to completely surrender ourselves to God, to be obedient in listening to God, even as Abraham was, and to listen to Jesus Christ's voice in our own lives. Only when we embrace such a total listening can we take up our personal cross and surrender fully to God our Father. And then we can each begin to fathom the glory of our mountaintop encounter with Christ. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI said this concerning Lent, and I quote, Lent stimulates us to let the Word of God penetrate our life and in this way to know the fundamental truth, who we are, where we come from, where we must go, what path we must take in life, end quote. Lent is our time in the desert to face our temptations and our sinfulness and to repent and to convert our hearts, to change them back to the will of God, opening ourselves to his divine mercy and forgiveness. The Holy Spirit always guides us on our Lenten journey of change, always ministering to us like the Holy Spirit ministered to Jesus. If we journey through Lent well and purposeful, we can then come to the glory of the Easter morning when we will see that our journey has brought us joy, joy that far outweighs any personal sacrifices we might have had to make along the way. But maybe the best thing of all is that we experience a conversion of heart. We turn back to God and we ourselves begin to take on a glow of the res or transfigured Jesus and we begin to listen with our hearts. Today, let us ask Jesus Christ to strengthen and safeguard our lives of faith through his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the gift of the Holy Eucharist. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen.
Like St. Peter, we believe that it is wonderful for us to be here. In a divine presence, we confidently bring our prayers to God our Father. Please sing the response, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that our days may truly become the accept acceptable time of grace, salvation, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are far from the church, that in this season of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this season of Lent will be a time of deeper conversion for our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, May they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Rose the Lecky, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Joanne Tishov, mother of Dennis Tishov, and Cam Siansi II who died this past week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, with grace and glory you transform our lives. By these prayers, strengthen us to come through the trials of this earthly life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. We'll offer the prayer in time of pandemic. 
Lord Jesus, you came to bring salvation to our world. You humbled yourself to accept death on a cross. Be with us as we confront the spread of the coronavirus with courage and hope. Be present to the sick and to those who accompany them in their suffering. Strengthen our medical professionals and caregivers. Comfort families who are separated from one another. Protect those who are at risk of the virus in their work. Grant wisdom to our civic officials and perseverance to scientists. Spare us from the ravages of this illness and console us in our uncertainty and fear. Unite us in hope, enlighten us in faith, and give us the grace as a church to love one another as you have loved us. Through the intercession of our Heavenly Mother Mary and Saint Joseph, we make this prayer as we place our trust in you. 